So, um, Hannah, you're not alone by um, loving this verse. I, 23 and a half years ago, Adela and I put um, this verse down as, as our marriage verse. So when, when Brian asked me to preach on this verse, I thought, oh, wow. Because for 23 years, I've been trying to figure this verse out. And I'm struggling. So I hope that you will join me in my struggle and you would hear it from that point. Um, I've experienced in my life that God has, has provided when, when seeking the kingdom. I've experienced at times where I thought I would, would see provision in a different way. So I'm struggling with the verse um, and the whole thing of the kingdom of God. And I hope that we're going to do today is going to give both you and me, more clarity on that. So the first thing we need to ask is, what are you seeking for? If I would ask you to share today what you're seeking for, would you be happy to share it with everyone in this room? Or is it something you'd rather just keep in your private room for itself because you're you're embarrassed for searching for things that are maybe not as spiritual as you think it should be? I looked at what the world says, what we're searching for, and I stumbled onto this lady uh, from Forbes um, that, that wrote a whole paper on what she found from research, what people are searching for. Um, and she said they are searching for confidence. Everyone wants to have more confidence. They're searching for happiness. Their whole drive towards happiness is very powerful in the world. Then they're searching for freedom. Everyone wants to be free. Um, and a lot of people are really seeking for that in, in, in everything in their life. Then people are searching for peace. People are searching for fulfillment. People are also searching for joy. Uh, and there are different definitions that people put up for joy to make it um, more spiritual and more acceptable and, and those kind of things. Then there are people that are just searching for balance. I just I just want to have some balance in my life, not work too much, not not work too much, um, all those things. But what she said in her study is that the core of all of that is really money. A lot of people are searching for money. That's, that's the core, right? Because the money would give you confidence. You will buy happiness. You will be free. Nobody can tell you what to do if you've got enough money. You'll be peaceful about whatever happens in your life. You'll have the fulfillment because there's enough money to buy the fulfillment and have joy because it's just a joyous thing to have money. And then you can have that balance, not working too hard because you've got enough money so you can spend more time with your family and friends and whatever. So that is how the world sees this whole dynamic with searching for something. So this verse messes with that. And and this verse is is what Christ said. So I think we should take it um, serious and really look at what does this verse say. So let's start. So the first word that is important is seek. When we seek something, we attempt to find it. We, we're really looking for it. We want to be with it and have it, right? So what are we seeking? We're seeking first, that is before anything else, the, the kingdom of God which is a a spiritual reign and authority of God. So what we're searching for first is to have God as the one that calls the shots, the the one that is in authority, the one that is in charge. So that is what we're searching for. So um, it is important to note it is of God, not of myself or my church or whatever. We're seeking the kingdom of God. I find that very often we get so busy with our own little thing, my little ministry, my church. We should be looking at the bigger picture. We should be looking at God's kingdom that is bigger than us here, that is bigger than your family, that's bigger than your circle of friends. It's God's kingdom, and that should be our focus. And when that is our focus, it is our focus when we are alone, when we are at work, when we are in church, when we are uh, with our friends um, at maybe a pub or whatever. It's, it's where you are. You're always searching for the kingdom of God. 
Right, so, um, and we attempt to find his righteousness. That's another thing that I struggled with, because I, I always thought, okay, I must find righteousness, I must find righteousness. And at one stage, that word his just jumped out. And I realized it's not my righteousness. Yes, it connects with me um, through Christ, but it's his righteousness. He does the work. It's not me that is so wonderful and, and amazing and so super spiritual. It's not me that is in the center of this universe. It's God that is in the center of this universe. So if we carry on with that, it says all. In other words, it's not just some, it's all. And these things, and this is where my, my brain started popping, right? Because the verses right before that talks about food, it talks about clothing, and, and if you think of the, the persecuted church, they, they are searching for God's kingdom, and they often are struggling with food and clothing. And I'm, I'm, it was a big issue for me, and I, I was wondering whether there's something I'm missing here. And I, today I'm going to take you on that journey of seeing what we might be missing um, as we go there. Because it says it will be added. It doesn't say it might be added. It will be added. So if you're seeking the kingdom of God, this will be added. It, it's not a possibility. It is something that is a definite. It will be added to you. So it's added to you. And that is the question. And that's the question where we often feel we get stuck in, right? That's the question where we, we kind of get confused and we feel we can't move forward and, and we stick with that question. So when we're stuck with a verse or when we hear a message that doesn't make sense to us about a verse, it's, the key to that is always to look before and after, to look at the context. So let's go before this verse first. Um, when you look at Matthew 6, right, it starts with giving. And what does it say? If I give something, I mustn't try to get everyone to see me so that I can get praised for giving, right? I must give in secret, and, and then a special thing happens. Then it talks about praying, which is talking to God. How is that not an amazing thing, right? And, and it's, it's so special, and... And then Christ says, do that in secret. But it's so nice when people can see how I can speak in a spiritual voice when I'm praying. And I, I pray so lovely and I have the right words, you see. Um, and then the fasting. Yeah, once again, fasting brings you closer to God. It builds a relationship with God. But how often have you heard people say, oh, I'm fasting today. One day you'll be there as well, and you'll understand why we fast. Uh, so every time Christ said, your father sees in secret, and he will reward you. So it's about reward. It's about reward. And, and that is not a selfish thing, us wanting a reward from God. When you want a reward from God, you are glorifying him because you are trusting him to be able to give you a reward. We're making him important enough. So let's have a look at that section further. We now get into the section where we talk about finances, right? And I'm going to just read it to you and then I'm going to reflect with you on that a little bit. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye, <laughs> the eye, <laughs> the eye is the, full, uh, the light, lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be um, full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be 
um, devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So the whole thing with the eye is that the eye is the place you focus on, right? And it says where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be. Um, so what we focus on has a very definite uh, effect on us. And then it carries on to just amplify that by saying you cannot serve God and money. So what does that bring with it? Let's go to the next verse and, and see what happens. It says, therefore. So if there's a therefore, it, it always connects to the previous thing, right? So therefore, you can't serve God and money, right? Um, if you serve money, you will be anxious. Because money is never enough. Yeah? Um, I forgot his name. The, there's the, the, the guy that was the richest man on the planet at one stage. They asked him, how much, how much is enough money? He said, a little bit more. Rockefeller. Rockefeller. You see, she Googled it. Sure. <laughs> yes. She's fast. She's fast. Business day. <laughs> okay, there you go. So, and, and then this verse goes on. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? And I think this is where it starts to kind of uh, twist my mind a little bit, right? Because there's something that is more than. So why is life and body so important. It's the bigger thing, I believe. So let's have a look at what, what the rest of the verses say about that. So first of all, life. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. So those are the normal things we do, right? To, to just get what we need to, to eat. We, we prepare, we work, we do things. And yet the Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more that of more value than they. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to their life? You see, Christ is talking about the bigger thing, about that extra life we're trying to get through money, through having enough, right? And he's, he's trying to show us that that is not unimportant, but God knows about that. But what about the important thing? You see, I think the important thing is the reward, which is life. Life is the reward. It's the thing that God gives us when we seek him in secret, when we don't try to get it from people around us. And then he carries on with body. And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Once again, working hard to get that thing, stressing about it. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Once again, I think the reward is something else. It is maybe the new body that we will get the body that is waiting for us in future. So Paul also had a, a struggle with this whole thing, uh, and he spoke to, um, who Paul wrote it, whoever he wrote it to, the Philippians, right? So he wrote to the Philippians, brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes, once again, what you focus on. Remember what, when we, we read that part, what is your eye focusing on? Keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you, even in tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame with minds that are set on earthly things. And that's very often our challenge, right? Our minds are set on earthly things. And, and look at what he says about people that are, have minds that are set on earthly things. The first thing that we read there is their God is their belly, what they eat, uh, and they glory, 
uh, and their glory is their shame. The expensive, nice clothes they have, whatever they can cover themselves with. So I think the focus needs to be different. Let's have a look at something else that Paul said. Do your best to come to me soon. For Demas, in love with the present world, focusing on the here and now, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Titus, I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus and Troas, also the books, and above all, the parchments. So here Paul shows us, it's not that he never wanted any clothes, right? It's not like Christians shouldn't have clothes. Uh, he even says to them, bring my cloak, right? But, but what is his main focus? His main focus is the ministry. Bring Mark, because he's good for ministry. Bring the books, bring the parchments. Those are all things he needs for ministry. And what makes this even more powerful is this is his last letter. He knew, I'm going to die soon. So I wonder if the cloak was even for him, or possibly for somebody else he knew needs it. We'll never know. In Romans, he says to us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And that's really, to my opinion, what it's all about. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are uh, regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Now, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. What are you when you are more than a conqueror? The battle is over. You have won. The success is yours. The peace is yours. The freedom is yours. The joy you get from that is yours through Christ. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, or de nor depths, uh, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So let's have a look at the conclusion that Christ made. Christ said, therefore, once again, therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall I eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. So it's not like he says you, sh you shouldn't be having that. I know you need this, right? But that is what somebody seeks for that doesn't have Christ. That is what Christ is saying to these, this group of people. So... It is important to have things on our journey, but we must always remember the journey is never more important than the destination. And our destination is heaven, not here on earth. So we spoke about the reward before. Let's have a look at the reward after. So the verse after 33 is 34, by the way. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So once again, we have a therefore. So the therefore refers to the verse before that we are talking about. And I think in that verse, it actually refers to the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which is our reward, his righteousness, his kingdom. That is our reward. So what does that practically look like? I think in, in our day-to-day -day lives, we're very busy with the praise of men. That's why we want to do things so that people see it. That's why we are behaving in ways in the presence of others as, uh, in a different way than the way we behave at home. 
Be very careful of that, especially if you're a parent, because your children see that. And they make the decision that Christianity is hypocritical. And if you behave that way, it is. Earthly possessions. So many of us get caught up with our earthly possessions. Because it's so important to have all these things, right? Because when I die, I'm going to take it with me. We have physical needs. If you die of hunger and you have Christ, is that bad? It's not desirable, right? But it's worse to have a full belly and go to hell. The destination is the important thing. So we as Christians should have it this way around, where we focus on the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And these other things are also there. They're also there. They're also added to the list, but they are on the bottom of the list and not the top of the list. You see, if I look at how Christians should be thinking, how we should be thinking, my opinion is the following. We first... That's a good point, right? We first seek Jesus and the kingdom of God and his righteousness. From that, we have an absolute confidence. Because whatever happens here with me, I know my destiny. I know where I'm going. So having a real relationship with Christ makes me safe here where I am. Gives me the confidence to do things that sometimes are difficult to do things that are sometimes crazy, but grow the kingdom of God. How can you not be happy if you are focusing on your destination? If I tell uh, Nathaniel we're going to Swakopmund, it doesn't matter what happens, right? Everything can break, everything can go wrong, but we're going to Swakopmund and he'll be happy. Happiness is not that complicated. Then freedom. What is your ultimate freedom? Your ultimate freedom is to know that you're going to be free forever, for eternity. Peace. Through Christ, we have a peace that doesn't make sense, does it? Fulfillment. I felt the most fulfilled when I spoke to people about the kingdom. I felt the most fulfilled when I could share the gospel with someone. I felt the most fulfilled when I knew that my loved ones are going to go with me where I'm going. Joy. You've heard enough sermons about joy and Christianity, right? But it's, it's true. If you, if you know where you're going, your present situation doesn't steal from your joy. joy. If you truly believe that you're going to be with Christ, what can happen to you here and now that will steal your joy? And then balance. I speak about balance often, but people forget about the spiritual balance. And that balance balances everything else. Having the correct estimation of, of Christ's importance in your life and engaging with your world from that point, that is the balance that makes everything else balanced. That is the balance that will make you less fearful of losing your job, less fearful of losing relationships, and more engaged with doing something about, about both. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that we know that when we seek your kingdom, and your righteousness, that you are the one that makes it happen. You are the one that gives us the peace, the joy, the freedom, the confidence, the fulfillment. You are the one that gives us the happiness we need in the moment. Lord, I thank you that you are enough. And that it's about your reward. You remind us today that we'll live for that reward in our secret chamber, in the place where people can't see us, and that we'll love you, Lord, as you love us. Amen.